So, Jen, with um, budget blowouts being the key uh, pain points for... Um, My manners, yeah. <laughs> what do you do differently to manage the situation and help homeowners? Yeah, to um, avoid them or to prevent them. More so manage their budget. Yeah. So, I think, you know, if you've never renovated a home before, you can kind of be forgiven for not... Yeah really knowing what it's going to cost or, or you know, what it actually takes to complete your renovation. And I think a lot of the risk for budget blowouts up front in a project is that misalign- misalignment between expectations and reality. Yep. You know, I have a lot of clients who kind of come to me and they go, oh, I want to do this, this and this and this and my budget's 150 grand. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> you're talking about a scope of works that's probably two to three times the cost. And it's because they just don't, don't fully appreciate cost uh, of labor. Well, not so much cost of labor. Just like if I give you an example on a very small scale, like someone wants to renovate their bathroom, yeah, and so they go, okay, well, I'm going to use these tiles and this tapware, and I've got a trader who has a plumber and a sparky and a tiler, and Bob's your uncle. Let's go, fifteen grand. That's what the builder quoted. Yeah, um, I've bought all my bits and pieces. That's what it's going to be. But the problem is that. Um, Nine times out of ten, when you renovate a bathroom, you pull it out and you need to, um, particularly in the older villas and bungalows, you need to um, treat rotten timber, you need to potentially strengthen the subfloor for a new bath, um, yeah. you need to put extra nogging or plywood in the walls for your wall hung vanity, uh, you quite often need to straighten walls and reframe them at 600 centres or 400 centres to right. take your villa board or your, um, your jib, depending on what you're lining your walls with, and all of those costs very quickly add up and that would be perceived as a I guess a budget blowout or a variation yeah. from the builder to say oh we couldn't have foreseen that these, that these you know it's walls needed wall. to be reframed and it's like yeah. well actually if you've done enough of these you would know that 90 95% of the time that's exactly what needs to be done well well but the builder's not going to get the job if he quotes 50 grand is he well with this well. but so and this and, is and, this is, the, and this is the problem and so yeah. this is why you know a lot of homeowners will say well um you know, let's just get three builders to price. And in, and in that competitive tender situation, as you know, quite often builders are going to conveniently miss things and caveat their quote with a, a bunch of tags yeah. and jargon that homeowners don't understand. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, so that their quote looks more competitive. But actually when you do bid levelling mm-hmm. between those three contractors, what you'll find is that they're probably all within a couple of percent of each other by the time you add in all the things that they probably have missed that we know, well, you know, that somebody like me knows is going to come up. Yep. So I actually tend to recommend to homeowners um, ECI, which is a term I'm sure you're familiar with, early contractor involvement. This is so common practice. Uh, common yeah. practice more in commercial. Yeah. Um, and obviously I mean, actually not that's so common, my background. But yeah. <laughs> well, no, not actually that common. Yeah. Common, yeah. When I worked in um, fit out, it was quite often what we would do, um, yeah. working with preferred tr- contractors. And so we would bring, I would bring with homeowners, I would match them to the builder who I thought was the best fit for their project and bring them in prior to lodging building consent yeah. if it's a, um, a project that's going to trigger consent and just kind of go, okay, well, what are our risk areas here? What is the architect design that maybe isn't, um, doesn't have the best buildability for you as the contractor? How can we make this more efficient, yeah. um, what details are we missing in the drawings that are going to help you to price more accurately? And then, of course, you kind of work through this negotiated tender process with them and homeowners still sometimes want to go off and get other quotes, but yeah. then those people aren't as intimately familiar with the scope as the one who's been involved from the beginning. So it can be, um, yeah, I guess there's a lot of risk areas from choosing a contractor, yeah. but ultimately what it all comes down to is design and scoping the project because it's the most important thing though isn't it yeah it's the most important thing like going back to that example that I said at the beginning it's not just a simple case of choosing your tiles and your tapware and getting a tradie to price for the the work that you can see which is the tiling and the painting and the demo um it's actually going okay well realistically what are our risk areas here um can we include provisional sums for those risk areas prior to opening up walls and you know, even including a contingency and fully fleshing out what that scope could be because, you know, chances are it's going to be two to three times what you what you think it's going to be. So and you're going to have to pay that regardless. So course. wouldn't you rather know at the beginning? 100%. Yeah. So the, so the value you add is you provide homeowners certainty. 
Yeah, correct. Yeah. Up front. Up front. Yep. Yeah. It's so, going to cost what it's going to cost. So yep. let's figure that out at the beginning yep. because it's better to make compromises on your design at the beginning if you have to for a, bu- for a budget yep. as opposed to kind of already committing to a specific scope, getting two thirds of the way through and realizing that you actually can't afford to finish it or you've got to go back to the bank or something and you're kind of scrambling or you have to go to second tier lending to yeah. to kind of to, yeah. to pay for it at the end because you didn't factor these things in up front. Yeah. So um, do you have a lot of homeowners turning around and saying, you know what, if this is what it's going to cost me, I'd rather not proceed to the renovation? Um, I mean, depends, I suppose. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's more than likely they'll kind of scale it back. Yeah. So when a homeowner comes to me for one room, like a kitchen or a bathroom, usually it's because scope is quite limited maybe they're bankrolling it you know they've saved 50 grand and they you know or 20 grand and they just want to do this one room um and so it might be a case of compromising on things like rather than floor to ceiling tiles in their bathroom it might be tiles on the floor and a v-groove on the walls or painted walls you know to get um mileage out of their out of their budget there are always ways to make it work yeah um sometimes they might go to the bank and ask for a little top up um sometimes they might just give it another three three six months until they've got a little bit more cash um with larger projects it's more likely to be a scaled down yeah um approach like it's like a two-stager or um you know it might be like i don't know a part of the house that's not been being extended is renovated first and then later on we do a second stage which is renovating and re- uh, extending and reconfiguring a living area or something yeah. like that um i don't Sounds think it's almost exactly like a commercial project yeah i don't i actually don't think i've ever had anyone go oh no don't worry about it yeah um there's yeah no we we usually find a path forward yeah, yeah, for them yeah. to get what they need because normally they're renovating to solve a problem, Yeah, right? It's sure. um, yeah. it's space or they've been stuck inside for two years during a pandemic and they're sick of looking at their four walls um, or they need another bathroom or yeah. they're having another child and they, you know, there's always something 